Just two days ago, our next speaker, Brent Bozell, published a blog exposing the leftist media's biased perspective on Donald Trump's Independence Day address. He wrote, Trump is playing the press like an accordion. They are the campaign issue. They are the ones politicizing current events against the candidate they despise. Mr. Bozell is the founder and president of the Media Research Center, America's largest watchdog organization. He is also the president of CNS News and the founder of For America, otherwise known as the right wing's Facebook army. Mr. Bozell has dedicated himself to seeking and spreading truth. He is a commentator, a debater, an author, a businessman, and one of the most influential men in the conservative party. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Brent Bozell. Please welcome the founder of the Media Research Center, Brent Bozell. Good morning. Good morning, Colorado. How are you? Let, it's, it's, it's a great pleasure to be here. I see the conspiracy everywhere. Uh, I, I, see, I see everyone the media hate. Um, God love you for being here. Uh, look, I'm, I'm asked, I'll, I'll, I'll try to go a little bit quickly here. I'm asked, no, I won't. I, I'm, I'm asked everywhere I go, two questions. Why do the media hate Donald Trump so much? And what is it that they hate about him? First of all, let's look at the why do they hate him so much. Let's go with the how. Every month, the Media Research Center looks at the coverage of Donald Trump by the national news media. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an extraordinary truth to see this happen. Month after month, no matter what happens in the world, 91% negative, 89% negative, 92% negative, 94% negative, 89% negative. It doesn't move that high. On his, just to put this in perspective, we know that, that when a president begins his term in a January of, of, that, of that year, the media always give them a honeymoon period just to let them get acclimated. And they did with Donald Trump. The negative rating, the negative coverage dropped all the way down to 86% with, with him. And it's happened month after month. They attack, they attack, they attack. And, and the problem is, ladies and gentlemen, that while they're attacking and while they're trying to get America to focus on what an evil man he is, they're also ignoring purposely the good news, the real news about Donald Trump. We found it fascinating, Tim Graham and I, who uh, he's my co-author in our new book, Unmasked, and I'm sure all of you have bought it, and if not, during the break, go order it on Amazon. But we looked at this, and we asked ourselves, what is there good news about Donald Trump? Well, Donald Trump tried to help them. The administration tried to help them along. In October of 2018, last year, they put out a report on their accomplishments, since apparently the media didn't know what they were. Just listen to some of the things that they put out. 3.9 million new jobs created. And this is October of last year. For every new regulation, 22 regulations that were cut. The biggest, the biggest corporate tax cut in history. An individual tax cut as well. Speaking of individual, the individual mandate of Obamacare was killed. He moved, he moved, and for this audience, I know this is so important, he moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. He appointed the most circuit court judges of any president in his first year in history. He defeated ISIS militarily. They don't look on the economic side, where poverty is concerned. He lowered the black poverty rate to its lowest level ever. Unemployment, unemployment. The unemployment rate for women dropped to the lowest level in 65 years. And then there's this one, this one nugget I bet none of you have heard. I sure hadn't heard because no one in the media have reported this. Did you know 
that this administration, as of last October, had detained 127,000 illegal aliens with criminal records. Did you know that? You didn't? You didn't because the media didn't cover it and they won't cover it. So the question remains, why? Why do they hate this man so much? I want to put forward my theory. It's a three-pronged situation that he's facing. Number one, Donald Trump said in running that he was going to undo Barack Obama. Bar Barack Obama was the hero of the press. Obama, remember, he said he was going to fundamentally transform America. And if Hillary had gotten in there, that would have been the last nail on the coffin for America. If she'd been allowed in there four years, and God forbid, eight years, that would be the end, the end of America as we know it, which is exactly what the national news media wanted. And along came Donald Trump and said, uh, 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 I'm going to reverse it if I'm elected president. And he made one promise after another that just horrified them. But the one that I really, really liked, did you know, did you know that Donald Trump is the first president or presidential nominee ever underscore ever to promise a pro-life Supreme Court justice? Do you know that? No, no president, not even Ronald Reagan, has ever said, if elected, I will put a pro-life Supreme Court justice on the bench. And then he said, and here's the list that I'm going to choose from. This horrified the press. Abortion, the right of a woman to kill her baby, is the single most important thing to the press. And along comes Donald Trump and he says, no, 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 no. If I'm elected, we're going to turn that around. And that just horrified them. So that's the first one. The second one is a guilt trip. They believe they created this monster. And in a kind of a sense, they did. They made him a national celebrity through The Apprentice. And they just pushed him and pushed him and pushed him. And suddenly, he's a presidential candidate. And they didn't mean that. They meant him just to be a celebrity. And you know, remember how they laughed at him when he first ran? They laughed at him. They thought on late, late night talk shows, they just thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And then he got stronger and stronger and stronger. And their reaction was, my God, what have we done? Third reason, and this is the best one. He is the first presidential candidate to openly declare war on the press. No presidential candidate has ever done that. He did, he did what I've urged Republicans to do for years. Stop complaining. Stop whining about the press. You want to do something about them? Take them on because the American people will be on your side. And he made it the cornerstone of his campaign. They couldn't believe it. They've been on defense the whole time. They've never been on defense. And he won't stop every single day. So those are the reasons. So, 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 so what are they doing? They are still looking. They're not letting up one bit. I want to give you just the example of the Russian collusion story. Just think about this, ladies and gentlemen. If a news reporter, quote unquote reporter, has the responsibility to report the news, that news reporter would report what Donald Trump and everyone around him said from day one, there is no collusion. And no reporter was willing to write a story saying, there is no collusion. And there was no collusion. Not one smidget of evidence. Not one example of collusion. And yet the media wrote and wrote and wrote thousands of stories about collusion, including all sorts of fake news stories that they came out with. And then they all looked at the Bob Mueller report. Ha, 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 it's going to come out. There's going to be the evidence. He's going to be indicted, going to be removed from office. And Bob Mueller came out with the report. No collusion. And the media went nuts. Rather than doing what they should have done, which is to say, well, there was no collusion. No, no, no. They turned to the Democrats. Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, A that silly AOC. You guys, <laughs> she's such a fool. Anyway, no, they, 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 <laughs> they, they, they turned to them. And they said, we want you to call for collusion. So they're all calling for collusion. They haven't left it alone. And they're not going to leave it alone. 
They're going to pursue this all the way to the next election. They want this man removed. They're not going to remove him. So they want to defeat him from office, and it will cost them everything. I'm asked, what's the future of the news media? Ladies and gentlemen, I think they're dead. I want you to think about CNN. CNN's numbers right now, this is on a good night, 761,000 people, thousand people nationwide. Now how, let's put that in perspective. That's less than two tenths of 1% of the American people. Putting it in better perspective, there are more people who own pet chickens <laughs> than watch CNN. <laughs> there. there are more practicing witches in America than viewers of CNN. And my favorite, ladies and gentlemen, there are more prostitutes in America than there are viewers of CNN, which only proves they're getting screwed more than once. Thank you very much.